good evening. Even less than one person can understand the suffering of another person, we will be able to understand the suffering of our Lord that he has gone through on, us, on our behalf. His suffering has so many more dimensions than we can comprehend. How will we be able to understand, for instance, what suffering there was for him in the fact that he was God himself? Yet it does not stop us from thinking about it, from what has been revealed to us in his word. In the evening devotions this week, as we follow the path of his suffering from his handling over by Pilate to his crucifixion at Calvary, we will reflect on his physical, physical suffering, his mental suffering, and his suffering that he went through in his relationship to his Father. Jesus Christ was fully man. Here on the way to the cross, it becomes clear in the following event. We read from Matthew 27, verse 31 to 32. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. Any attempt to say more about Simon than the Bible does will remain speculation. What we do know is that he had a common Jewish name, Simon. He was probably from his hometown of Cyrene, which was located in North Africa, today Libya, for the Passover in Jerusalem. He had, according to Mark, two sons named Alexander and Rufus. Of a Rufus and his mother, we read later in Romans 16, positively. From Alexander, we read in Acts and 1 and 2 Timothy, unfortunately negative. Whether it was the same Rufus and Alexander, however, we do not know. Both names were commonly known in, at that time. However, it remains remarkable that the first three of the four Gospel writers mention the events. Only John tells that Jesus carried his cross himself. There can actually be only one reason why it occupies such a prominent place in the story, and that is to tell that Jesus, although he initially wore it, was no longer able to to carry his cross. His physical suffering would become too severe. He had not slept the night before. He was taken in handcuffs from one trial to another. He was pushed by the Jews and slapped in the face. After the trial by Pilate, he was flocked with a whip consisting of different strings to which pieces of glass or metal were tied at each end. He probably endured the usual 39 plus 1 blows. And then the soldiers pressed the crown of thorns on his head and struck him over the head with sticks. He could no longer bear the cross. If anyone thought Jesus was a human power man who would physically get rid of the Jewish enemies, this story proves them wrong. By his true human nature, he became drowsy and tired and hungry. He was really bleeding and experiencing pain. And now the suffering becomes unbearable, a foreshadowing of what would still happen at the cruel crucifixion. There he would cry out of thirst, of thirst and lose blood and would surrender his body when he actually died physically. The comfort does not lie in Jesus' physical strength and power, but in the physical bodily resurrection from the dead. Jesus is not a human, earthly, Superman, Batman, Iron Man or Spider-Man. He did not come to keep us physically healthy forever with brute force and to keep us physically alive forever. Now he came precisely because we will not physically live forever. 
He came to physically suffer in our place and to die with the purpose of opening the door to internal physical life. Good night.